1881, New York City. A man dodges someone in the busy streets looking worried. He ducks into a building and rushes to send an urgent telegram, paying extra for speed. The message urges his nephew to hurry and save him. The nephew, Edgar Rice Burroughs, rushes to his uncle's estate. There, a lawyer tells him his uncle, John Carter, passed away suddenly, leaving everything to Edgar. Among the belongings, Edgar finds an old diary. After the lawyer leaves, the young man starts reading. The story begins in post-Civil War Arizona, where John Carter, a former Confederate Army captain, is hunting for gold. The locals aren't fond of him. Colonel Powell from the cavalry tries to recruit Carter to fight the Apache, but Carter refuses. After escaping from Fort Grant on Powell's horse, Carter encounters an Apache warband. Tensions rise due to a language barrier leading to a gunfight. Carter seizes the opportunity to escape, but he returns to rescue Powell after the colonel is shot. The two men hide in a small cave in a box canyon. When the Apache approach, they retreat upon seeing something on the rock above the cave. Carter investigates and finds a spider symbol on the rock. Leaving Powell behind, he explores deeper and discovers a chamber filled with gold-lined walls. He's mesmerized until he's startled by a stranger. They fight, and Carter shoots the bald stranger who vanishes, leaving behind a glowing blue medallion. Carter picks it up and repeats some words he heard, then suddenly wakes up in a strange desert. Carter struggles to walk and feels like he's floating, unaware of the lower gravity on Mars. He eventually learns to move around. While exploring, he finds a nest of hatching green creatures with six limbs. As he prepares to leave, a group of armed green beings on large beasts approaches. They initially attack him, but one of them, a tall green alien named Tars Tarkas, orders them to stop. Despite the language barrier, they exchange names. Tarkas, recognizing Carter as a stranger, asks him to jump again. Carter tries to grab Tarkas's weapons but is quickly subdued before he can fight back. Once again, Tarkas intervenes, sparing Carter from his group. They gather the hatching creatures and bring Carter to their home in an ancient city's ruins. Carter, feeling overwhelmed and desperate to return home, realizes the medallion is his only hope, but Tarkas has it now. In the city, the other Tharks treat him roughly, mistaking him for an animal or baby due to his inability to communicate. They throw him in with the babies, where Sola, a female Thark, takes him under her care. Despite being looked down upon by others like Sarkoja, Sola helps Carter, and after she gives him a liquid, he gains the ability to speak and understand their language. In a distant place, humanoid beings are fighting on airships. One side is blue and the other is red. On a red ship, three bald figures give General Sabthan a blue device. It lets him shoot energy bolts. But when he aims at the figures, he's blasted backward. These figures are Thurns, serving the goddess, who supports Prince Sabthan. Their leader, Matai Shang, encourages the general to use his new powers. He shoots energy bolts at enemy ships and wins the battle. In the royal palace of Helium, Deja Thoris practices a speech while her father, Tardos Mors, the ruler of Helium, argues with his advisors. Deja shows them a machine that generates a weak blue ray, which she believes is the source of their enemy, Zodanga's power. A disguised Thern sabotages the device discreetly. Tardos sees the potential of this power, but acknowledges they lack time to explore it further. He orders Deja to marry Sabthan to halt the conflict. Despite her knowing it won't truly end Zodanga's expansion, and would halt her research. Back in Tharkville, Carter is accompanied by Wula, a quick and loyal creature resembling a wide-mouthed dog. Despite Carter's attempts to find Tars Tarkas quietly, Wula's noisy presence constantly disrupts his plans. Eventually, Carter crashes a Thark party with Wula, leading to chaos. When Tharks beat Wula and Sola, Carter intervenes, accidentally killing a Thark and revealing his extraordinary jumping abilities. Seeing Carter as a valuable asset, the Tharks brand Sola for her perceived failure, warning her that further mistakes will lead to her death due to lack of unmarked skin. The Tharks hide when a lookout warns of flying ships. Three ships appear, two red Zodanga chasing one blue Helium. They prepare for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Tarkas explains the war, Zodangans versus Heliumites. Deja Thoris tries to escape but falls, hanging hundreds of feet in the air. Carter, seeing she's human, leaps to rescue her. Using his incredible jumping skills, he saves her and fights off attackers. Despite her own fighting prowess, Carter helps turn the tide of battle. But the Helium ship crashes. After the battle, Tars Tarkas appoints Carter as his Dotar Sojat, or right-hand man, and offers Deja Thoris as a reward. Tarkas's rival, Talhajus, disapproves angrily. Carter, reminded of Powell, initially refuses, but Tarkas threatens Deja's life if he does. Reluctantly, Carter accepts. Deja wants to learn Carter's jumping ability, but realizes it's due to his different bone density. Carter just wants to return home and tries to explain Earth to Deja, 
who thinks he's either crazy or lying. When she realizes he's serious, they discuss astronomy and Carter reveals he's from Earth while currently on Mars, which Deja calls Barsoom. If there's a way to travel between worlds, the Therns might know. Despite Sola's objections, Carter and Deja enter a cave believed to be a Thern temple. Deja reads ancient markings, but they're arrested by Tharks for trespassing. Carter suspects Sola is his daughter, given Thark customs of isolating and raising young anonymously, which implies rule-breaking. Tarkas helps them escape, risking much. Sola, Carter, and Deja Thoris travel to the River Ises to solve the temple mystery, carrying the medallion. Along the way, Sola warns Carter that Deja might be misleading them. Confronted, Deja confesses they were headed for Helium. Angry, Carter considers abandoning her, suspecting she manipulated him. Ignoring Deja's pleas, he learns she's the Helium Princess, facing an arranged marriage to the Zodangan Prince and potential danger. Carter convinces her they need time and should go to IS's first. The river is a pilgrimage route where people seek paradise by ending their lives. Sola nearly joins them after seeing apparent Thark sailing away and bodies on the ground until Carter intervenes. Up the river, they discover an upside-down pyramid. Carter and Deja find blue glowing graphics depicting the solar system. Deja realizes the light comes from machines, not magic. It's the Ninth Ray, the same as the enemy's weapon. They suspect Carter's arrival on Mars was due to transmitting a copy of himself from Earth. Outside, a Thark army led by Matai Shang approaches, curious about the stranger meddling in the wars. Carter, along with the two women, prepares to flee. Despite Deja's objections, Carter stays behind to fight alone with Willa's help. He recalls the horrors of war, remembering his deceased family. Overwhelmed, he's rescued by a Helium battlecruiser. Tardos Moors and Sabthon arrive. Sabthon offers his sword to Deja and proposes marriage. Deja, nearly attacking him, instead asks them to take the wounded Carter to Zodanga for treatment. Carter wakes in a guarded room, thinking he's in Helium, but the guards laugh. They're from Zodanga. Kantos Khan, dressed in blue, reveals Carter's location and orders tighter security. He secretly urges Carter to take him hostage, but Carter is confused. Kantos, frustrated, pretends to be a hostage, guiding Carter away from the guards. In a nearby tower, Deja Thoris wears wedding attire. She thanks Kantos for bringing Carter and dismisses the others. Once more, she pleads for Carter's aid, but he refuses. When Deja notices his wedding ring, she realizes his heart belongs elsewhere, but the woman is now dead. She tells him the words to return to Earth. So Dangan guards arrive, but when they enter, Carter's gone. Deja and the others depart, but the chamber matron returns, revealing Carter hiding. She immobilizes him with a blue ray and transforms into Matai Shang, the Thern leader. Shang explains the Thern's role in Mars' fate and disguises himself to lead Carter through wedding preparations. He reveals Deja and others who know of the Ninth Ray will die after the marriage. Wula arrives, freeing Carter from Shang's restraint and they escape on a light flyer. After a wild chase, Carter crash lands near Sola. Unable to face the Zodangan military and Thern's alone, he decides to seek help from the Tharks. Back in Tharkville, Carter is thrown into jail, finding Tars Tarkas imprisoned too. Tarkas explains he was ousted by Talhajus. Furious, Tarkas nearly kills Carter for bringing Sola back, but weakened from beatings, he doesn't. Forced to fight giant white apes in a coliseum, Sola distracts the crowd, allowing Carter to kill the beasts. The Tharks acclaim him, and Carter challenges and beheads Talhajus, becoming the Tharks' leader with their army at his command. He leads them back to Zodanga to halt the wedding. Finding the city deserted, Tars Tarkas scolds Carter for the impossible task. Carter points to airships, but the Tharks refuse. He flies alone in a Zodangan aircraft, fooling guards. Crashing into the wedding, Deja is happy to see him, but it's too late. Zodangan's attack, led by Matai Shang with his blue ray. A large cruiser crashes, and Tharks join the battle against Zodangans. Matai Shang flees, but Carter retrieves the medallion. Sabthon dies by his beloved blue device during the fight. With Zodanga's threat gone and his feelings clear, Carter proposes to Deja with his wedding ring. She accepts, bringing joy to Helium and Thark. That night, Carter tosses the medallion into the canyon below and returns to bed. The guard, actually Matai Shang, grabs him, sending Carter back to Arizona's cave. He wakes to find the colonel's skeleton, the gold and the thern gone. Carter continues his story, spending a decade searching for another medallion on Earth. He believes other therns are here. He sets up a crypt on his estate, planning to return to Mars and leave his body safely. He entrusts his nephew Edgar to protect him. Edgar, shocked, rushes to the crypt and followed by a thern, finds it empty. As the thern attacks, Carter, disguised as dead, shoots and kills him. Carter explains his plan to Edgar and retrieves the medallion. He tells Edgar he'll play a vital role, guarding Carter's body on Earth while he returns to Mars. With the medallion, Carter lies in the crypt, reciting the phrase to return to Barsoom.